Okay, hey friends, in this video, we're going to add the ability to launch our thing here in Word. So, begin with the application. The first thing is to add a button. So, drag in and drop a button there under the other ones. Okay, let's extend it a little so it's bigger. Right click properties on the button. Change the display to text so it says open in Word, for example. And then scroll down through those properties. And change the name and code to btn open word like that. All right, make that a small O, not a big O. Open word. All right, then open up the Solution Explorer. And because we want to interoperate with Microsoft Word in our system, we need to add a new namespace reference. So, so far we have this one for Excel. So, right click here, add reference on the references tab or node. And then here, type Word and select whatever Word version you have. So in my case, I have Word 16.0, like there's this one right here. And right, then click OK. And this adds that right there, Microsoft.Office.Interop.Word. So now that we have that, we can work with Word in our own program. So now left up click, even actually before we do that, Right click and save dialog one and go to its properties and make sure at the end you add this right here. So word files, parentheses, star dot, doc X, close parentheses, vertical bar, star dot X, dot doc X, you see? So make sure you add that there to the end, to the filter. All right, so that is that. All right, now you can go and code up our so left click on open in Word. And now we'll bring up our stub on the bottom, like this. All right, now go up here to the code that we created to export to Excel and notice that the underscore application is underlined red because now there's an ambiguity. There are two namespaces, they're similar. One is Excel, one is Word. And it says application is an ambiguous reference between Excel application and Word application. So here in front of application right here, we're going to have to fix that a little bit, okay? You're going to put a dot like that. So in other words, take this entire sequence, right click and then copy it and just put it right in front of the application for Excel. So it's being found in the right place. Now that is fixed over here. See, that's it. Now it's Excel. All right. And the code that we generated to go into Word is very similar to the one that you see here. I will skip like this portion right here. That's for you to figure out, but it's very similar. Okay. So I'll write out everything except the header. And your little project will be to figure out how to add the header. All right. And then, okay. All right. So first we're going to type the following here. We'll say Microsoft.Office dot interop dot word dot and then underscore and then here type application okay and call it word like that and on the right side type new microsoft dot office dot and then interop and then dot word and then dot application so basically this means make a new word object all right, so once you have a new Word object, you can do a whole bunch of other stuff. You can make a new document, so you can type document like that, and then call it doc. And to add it, you can say word.documents.add. Okay, so make a new document, essentially. That's what that is saying. Once you have the document, then you can add a range. So Microsoft, and then you'll say here that office and then dot word, you know, the usual, okay? So enter up the word dot range like that. And then over here, name it RNG and set it equal to a new range. So doc dot range like that, 0, 0.0. All right. The next stage, we are going to type the following. So make a table, so you'll say here, table 
so that we can copy out the data grid view into Word using the table. So you'll say table, we'll call it say TAB, or if you want to call it more meaningfully WD table, okay, Word table or something like that, okay, WD table. And then here we'll say the following doc dot tables dot add and then you have to specify as it says a whole list of arguments so for the first thing is a range that's why i have a range up above a word range not an excel range so rng and then the number of rows and number of columns so well those have to be gotten from our data grid view so that the two are matched so here i'm going to say data grid view one dot and then rows dot count and then data grid view one dot columns dot count and then you terminate this with a semicolon so make a new table based on our data grid view like that okay now we can add some features to the table so type wd table that borders dot outside line style like this so this is like the outer border of the table there you go and then type wd line style dot and then you can choose this i'll choose a thicker one on the outside we'll say wd line style like this say so let's try it one more time it's a little tricky here sometimes with this word stuff so wd line style like this and then double okay so make a thick outer border essentially that's what this is saying next stage wd table that borders that inside line style so these are like the separators of individual cells essentially okay and then you're going to type wd line style dot and then w d line style and there's a single one okay so find the single wd line style single that's it so make this cell lines thin that's what that is saying all right the next stage here we're going to type the following so we'll say try catch finally so try all right catch errors could be generated so i'll say here exception ex open close curly braces and then here type message box uh, show and then ex uh, message like that so show a box with a message if there is an error and of course you have the ability here to customize the kind of message that you show and you can add like buttons icons and so on all right and lastly finally to clean up some resources because remember these are low level resources like writing the drive and interoperating with another program on your hard drive you see like word or excel or whatever it happens to be so here type word that quit all right, so quit word <laughs> and then just type word equals null and then also type doc equals null like this so what this is saying essentially is clean up the word object and document object like this so any code that you always want to run you put in the finally all right so now the try block is again the heart of the program the same as with excel we're going to say doc make an active document so you'll say word dot and then active document all right so make a active document and word and then after that you're going to use nested loops as before and again the reason is remember data grid view is tabular you want to make a table in words so use nested loops as an approach to do that so we'll say for i and ti equals zero in this context i basically you can think of as the row index i just don't feel like writing row index every time so remember i represents the row index let's add that note okay so i i is the row index like this from the data grid view that's good enough okay and then you're going to say i less than and then data grid view one rows that count minus one if you don't include the minus one again if you run the code at least in my case it gives me errors and then type here i plus plus so this is the usual you know you begin at zero because the first index is zero essentially you see and then you go through that 
and then you increment i, right? There you go. This is not a lesson on the for loops. We are, we've been over that already. All right, at the next stage here, open close curly braces, and then you will deal with the columns. So remember here, purpose is grab a row. Once you have a row grab, then you can step through the columns. That's why you need the inner loop. So you'll say for intj equals again zero, j less than data grid view one dot columns dot count, and then j plus plus. Okay, so here you may want to now follow what we did up here, right? If, if the i is zero then write out the header, otherwise write out the cell values. I'm going to skip that step. So again, that's for you to try to figure out. I'm just going to write out the values and that's it. So this loop is needed to step to the columns of each row. Okay, so once you have that, the way to do that is as follows. You're going to say WD table dot cell. See? And then it says integer row, integer column. Well, the integer row and the integer column, that's going to be i, comma, j, like this. But the only thing is, if you stick in i, comma, j again, there isn't one in a word that begins at 0, comma, 0. So you got to type plus 1 over here, okay? Plus 1. The same as we have to do with Excel, remember? If you try with the just i, when i begins at 0, and you try with j, when j begins at 0, for in my case, this through errors. All right. So that is the cell index there, right? I plus 1 and J plus 1. This is the cell index in Word now. So now we're making the transition, the connection between our program and Word. All right. And then to fill the contents, we're going to type the following. We'll say dot range. And then we'll say dot insert after. So that's a method there. And string text. So the text is the one from the data grid view at that same location in terms of indexes. Well, a digested location in terms of indexes, correct? So at i, comma, j. So here now you will type data grid view one and then dot. And then at the next stage you will type rows. And then over here put i. So remember, that i will first have the value 0, correct? So first you will grab a row, and once you have the row grabbed, then that inner loop will run as many times essentially as there are columns. So first grab a row with the outer loop. After that, the inner block runs several times. So for a single value of i, that means you have fixed the row, the inner for runs several times to complete the process of writing the cell values from our program to Word. So that's why you're going to type now columns like this. Okay, let's try that one more time. The cells, and then you're going to put here J. Okay, and then get the value and then convert it to a string like this. So what this is saying is, let's add a comment right above it. So line below runs several times so each time basically writing the cell value from the grid to word like that so choose a value of i and then step through the columns of that row writing out those values then you will advance the value of i and then again the code on the inside runs as highlighted writing out the values then you grab another value of i another row and then again, the code on the inside writes out the column values and so on and so on until there's no more data, essentially. All right, so that's that. At the next stage over here, we're going to say this. If save file dialog one dot, and then you'll say show dialog equals dialog result dot okay. Then we can write the actual thing, so we can type the following. So first we're essentially making a table, and then we can just save everything. So we'll, you'll type doc.saveas, you see? 
and then you can give it the name that you selected from the save file dialog so you'll type following save file dialog one dot file name so this means of course save file to drive all right and here make sure you put the double s like that and lastly, you want to perhaps preview the document. So to do that, type process.start, and then here type WinWord, not Word, but WinWord. That's what it's usually called, the executable file that actually presents Microsoft Word. And then here type, again, save file dialog one dot file name. Okay, so this simply means open the document in Word, right, after the table is made. Uh, it's pretty good for our purposes. Now keep in mind, again, this is a lot of code that I've created here, so I'm going to give it a go, but if I have to make adjustments, I will. All right, click Start. When you have so many different pieces, right, keeping track of what's what, that's not the easiest thing in the world anymore. Okay, Contacts, Business. All right, so we have some information there down below. I'm going to click Open in Word. All right, this looks promising. So down on the bottom now, you see I have a filter called Word Files, docx. All right, I'm just gonna choose an existing document I experimented yesterday. So I'm gonna choose that and then click Save. And do I wanna overwrite it? Yes, click Yes. And there it is, you see that? So our table has been made, very nice. Like that. And this is a regular table in Word, you see? So you can move it around and it's got all the usual properties of a table in Word. There you go. And notice the only thing missing is the header, so I can figure out how to do that. Close that. I'm not going to save it. I don't need it. Close this. There you go, friends. I hope you've learned something very practical in this example. At least I think this is. I've had to make the code like 90% just to fit most of it on the screen. But that is most of it at this point right there. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in another video.